attendance are. But I'm pretty sure, knowing this Terran, that it's pretty high right now. He's actually moving up to the ramp, so he's very committed into taking down Artosis at this very moment. Uh, also, the Terran Poly brought up along a bunch of SCVs. This is going to allow the Terran to keep those Thors at tip-top shape uh, and stay at peak fighting position uh, for this entire push. Uh, the oh, There's Karn again. Uh, the Terran player is moving into the main base of, pro, uh, of uh, Artosis, which is going to take out a lot of the production buildings. Hopefully, that's not going to cause too much damage, as Artosis does have a lot of his production buildings spread around the map. Uh, he does not need that uh, fleet beacon anymore, so if it goes down, it's not too bad. He already has the upgrades he needs for the uh, Void Rays. Yeah, very true. As you can tell, Artosis is a uh, food count down very uh, drastically compared to what you saw earlier. He's just trying to get out mass doors against the those. Uh, he's trying to get mass void rays, excuse me, against those. As you guys know, with the new patch upgrades, uh, void rays do extra damage to uh, massive units, and also considering Thor's are armored units, so it's actually quite a bit of a perk. It all depends on how uh, Artosis spreads out these uh, void rays. He's done a good job defending this army, and it looks like the Terran just is going to run up some NCs up his ramp and get killed anyway. So the Terran is just pretty much uh, building up another force, and he will be pushing up to see what uh, Artosis has. I think those SVs were pretty much just a scout. As you can tell, the scan goes down, so the Terran has a pretty good idea what's going on. He's going to start attacking. He's going to move his Void Rays in the back and send all his mass zealots in way, trying to create a choke. That is a lot of Thors. Wow. Yeah, EP, EMP goes off on the Void Rays, taking out all their shields, and then their, their life goes down very, very quickly to that uh, splash damage of the Thors. Uh, I don't think Artos is going to be able to come back from this, and neither does he. So he does GG, putting it to 1-1 against OGS Goma, the Terran player. Artos is looking uh, a little sad, but... Uh, we should be able to pull it back together for game three. So we're going to jump directly into game three. Uh, it's about a few minutes into the game. Uh, Artosis did open a one gateway build again. Uh, not quite sure what the Terran player did. This being Scrap Station, another very uh, close air spawn position. So it'll be interesting to see if this Terran player does go with a similar build to uh, Metalopolis maybe pump out a few Banshees uh, to harass the probe line and keep the Terran pretty much contained yet I mean keep the keep the Protoss very much contained but as you can tell this time Artosis is gonna be doing like a one one gate one robo build try to get out that fast observer so he can scout and see if any uh, Banshees will be coming his way yeah seeing as Goma did do a heavy Banshee play uh, last game he is going to be a little extra defensive for something like that happening again. You really want to get that Robo Bay out early for the Observer to be able to uh, nullify Cloak. Uh, hopefully he does get out enough Stalkers. He does have a ton of Sentries here, which will help him guard his ramp in the event that the Terran player does any sort of proxy build or uh, very aggressive one base play. Uh, he does warp in a few Stalkers in the back of his base. Uh, and there, he does scout the Banshee just as it come out. That is very good Observer timing from Artosis. Uh, he should have enough to be able to defend against this. He's going to be getting up a Twilight Council once again, hopefully for Blink. Uh, so this game is looking to be very similar to last game. Uh, close air spawns, just like in the last game, even though the map for last game was quite a bit bigger. It's going to be interesting to see how the Terran player reacts to not being able to get as many bases as on Metalopolis. Uh, so this Banshee is coming in. Uh, unfortunately, Artosis did not have his Stalkers positioned completely properly. So that Banshee might have gotten a few kills. I'm not quite sure, but maybe he can take it. Nope. It does get away. Uh, so, if the Terran player was being vigilant, he would have seen the Twilight Council going up and know exactly how to respond to this. Uh, so that Banshee provided very valuable uh, scouting for the Terran player. Uh, he is going to be sending in a second Banshee, and this first Banshee does scout the expansion of Artosis as well. So Artosis is completely scouted. Uh, while he does have good vision of the Terran base, he doesn't have full vision. Uh, this pylon, again, like last game, uh, it's great to have pylons out in different areas to be able to give you the ability to warp in units all across the map, but it does also create a slight liability for the Terran to be able to leverage to his advantage. Yeah, I agree with you on this, but uh, as for now, Artosis is pretty much going to try to get his uh, expansion up. 
he's going to be doing a pro transfer right here. Interesting to see how many moves. He actually, after this expansion, puts down two more gateways, so he gets four gateways up. So he has a steady stream of units that he can come in to defend his bases. Uh, interesting to see what he'll tech up to. It looks like he got Temple Archives again, so we will be seeing Storm and Feedback. It's all going to be depending on how uh, the Terran player clumps up his units and how he mic micros in. Uh, knowing this Terran from the last game, though, it looks like he's going to go with that same build and try to go out mass Banshee and mass Thor. I have not yet seen an armory out from the Terran player, but knowing how he's game style from the last game, it, we could see that. Yeah, it is quite possible. Here's the Thor. Uh, it does come out. Uh, this is very interesting, though, because it's hard for the Terran to get enough gas to be able to support both Banshees and Thors this early in the game. If uh, Artosis were to do some sort of aggressive four gate build, he probably would have been able to beat it quite easily. But unfortunately, he did go for a fast expansion build, which is quite common on the uh, Korean server, which is why the Terran player is probably okay with doing it. Uh, the Banshee's coming in here, uh, doing a little bit more damage. Uh, Artosis did not react quite quickly enough with the Observer, so he does lose a few ban uh, a few Stalkers here. Hopefully, yep, he does take out a Banshee. Uh, that still leaves the Terran to have a decent number of Banshees to do some harassment and scouting. Uh, two Banshees there are very, very hurt, uh, so the Terran player is being very skilled with these, getting them out when they need to so they can be repaired and come back in full force. <coughs> yeah, and again, the Terran's doing a great job. He's pretty much just keeping Artosis contained. The only scouting information he's going to be able to get it will be from those observers, and they can easily be picked off from a, a scan in his base. The Terran player is just constantly going from the main to the expansion, trying to pick off as many probes, be an annoyance to Artosis, and just making him produce more stalkers. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if when the Terran pushes out, if he's going to go with some Raven units again to try to drop down some point defense drone, and that is all going to come down to who's going to be the fastest on. Uh, being able to put down their tech. If the Terran goes fast enough to put down his point defense drone, it's pretty much going to null and, gate, null and void uh, the Protoss' army. And it depends if Artosis can get his storms off or his feedback in time, then that Raven's useless. So the Raven, or the uh, Banshee, once again doing quite a bit of damage to Artosis' expansion, taking out a few uh, probes here and taking out the stalkers that are warping in. This is quite interesting because the uh, Artosis has not scouted the expansion of the Terran player, so he does not know if he does have an expansion up. If he doesn't, even though Artosis took a decent amount of damage from these Banshees, he would still be quite ahead because of the uh, economic advantage that he does have. The Terran player, however, does have full scouting of what Artosis is doing and should be able to respond properly. Uh, however, uh, while Artosis tried the Void Ray build last game to counter the Thors, uh, it did not work as well as he expected it to, so he is going for more Immortals this game. Hopefully that will help to be able to defend decently. Uh, he does get a Banshee down here, hurts the other two and forces them to go home. And hopefully that will buy him the time to be able to get this expansion back up and running at full capacity. Yeah, I've never faced a bill like this, but so far it's from the Terran. I think from a pro's perspective, this is so annoying, and I hate this when this happens in the game. It just it gets me frustrated and it gets me off tilt and that's what's probably going to happen with Artosis. He knows he's one game down maybe he he, know, he needs to push out. He's getting a lot of uh, Thors because he's probably expecting that heavy I mean a lot of Thors excuse me. He's getting a lot of Immortals out because he's expecting that heavy Thor build again and yet again those Banshees are going to be hitting on his expansion and beautiful blink will be able to take one out yes he does and the other one has to run away Great placement from the observers and keeping them there. Most Protoss players just move them away after a while. So Artosis knows that uh, both his bases are on peril if he doesn't leave some sort of detection there. And actually putting down more gateways down. Actually just one. And... and uh, whoa, and he cancels his forge. And actually Artosis will be able to scout down to see that Banshee is going back home. Uh, yeah, he does see this Banshee go back home. Uh, this doesn't do anything extremely useful right yet, except it does give the Artosis the ability to feel a little bit more comfortable and be able to move a little bit more aggressively with his army, knowing that there's that one Banshee is not going to be harassing him anytime soon. Uh, he does put up this extra pylon to be able to warp in more Stalkers close to his expansion mineral line if he needs to. 
Uh, he's also setting up a, a third base here. Uh, as you move out, you really want to try to uh, use that as a, a, a shield um, for you to try to develop your economy. Unfortunately, the Terran player is coming in with a huge banshee reinforcement army here into Artosis' main base, uh, forcing him to pull back with an observer and several of his... Oh, actually, he's pulling back his entire army, uh, also not mining for this entire period of time. Uh, really, I think Artosis is not playing at his full potential right now. He is put off a little bit by this build and probably does not have much experience against it. Uh, the Terran player is doing a very, very good job of hitting exactly where Artosis is weak at any given time. Uh, almost like he's using map packs, but he obviously isn't since this is on land and he would probably get shanked if uh, he ever did something like that. Yeah, as you can tell, the Terran is just, like I always keep saying, he's just keeping him contained. I do not know why Artosis have his whole army on one uh, hotkey. He should probably try to split him up and keep a few stalkers at the base and always uh, just click over to them. He's going to try to break down these rat rocks and just uh, cut his way into his base. Yeah, he does scout that the Terran player does have a planetary fortress up at the gold base. Uh, he also sees that there weren't too many units there, so or too many SCVs, so the Terran player most likely just got that base going up and does not have the benefit from it quite yet. Uh, it is a huge investment to expand, especially with the Planetary Fortress. Uh, I don't know if this is a good idea for Artosis to be pushing this Planetary Fortress. Uh, it is going to cost him quite a few units and extend him so far away from his main base, making him vulnerable to an attack just like this. Uh, he does get off a few decent storms here, but oh, he actually takes on some of his own probes with those storms. Uh, he does take out the Planetary Fortress. I don't know how many units he lost. He was not watching that battle when it happened. And is able now to transfer to his third. Uh, if he can keep the Terran player onto the two base, one mining, one base, is, the main base is mined out, uh, then he should be able to slowly take an economic lead again in this game. Uh, a lot of bio units coming in from the Terran player. This looks more like a um, just a scouting excursion. Uh, it's going to be taken down quite easily by Storm and the rest of the army that Artos has had right here. Uh, Possibly a mismaneuver from the Terran player, or possibly just trying to clear up uh, some supply to be able to get some of the more powerful units like Thors and Banshees. Uh, we don't know what the supply count is for the Terran player. Uh, Artosis is, uh, it looks like about 130. I can't really tell. Um, but that means the Terran player is probably around 150, seeing as he has not lost many units this entire game. A scan going off by the Terran players, so he knows exactly where Artosis' army is and the exact composition of it. Uh, he does know there are a lot of Templar. Uh, they don't have a great amount of energy, so there's not going to be too many uh, storms from them. Uh, there's also a few uh, mortals in that mix, which will be very good against the Thors. As you can tell at the very moment, too, Artosis is researching uh, Thermal Lance, so we will be having Colossi is coming out very shortly. These immortals should be moved in front. I'm waiting for Artosis to micro his units up there so they can take the brunt of most of these attacks. Popping down more gateways at his third expansion. So he's going to be going very heavy on the gateway units yet again. He's going to break down these rocks. He sees the expansion over there. So he's going to take out the expansion and keep that stalker on the Terran side of the base to see if any reinforcements try to come up. Uh, I do believe he does have an observer by the rocks, which is good. If he did not, he'd be very vulnerable to a counterattack from the Terran. Uh, fortunately, he is going to be able to take that base down quite quickly and also scout the island base from the Terran player. Uh, the Terran is moving in with his full army here, so we're going to see an attack right here. This is most likely going to determine who's going to be able to take control of the game for the next uh, little while. Uh, that is a lot of Thors. Uh, Oh, and beautiful EMPs completely cover the entire army of Artosis. He is going to smartly back up here, allow the shields to regenerate before uh, engaging once again. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to give the Terran time to move into Artosis' third base and do a little bit of damage before the army can come back and hopefully defend against this. Uh, that is a lot of Thors. Uh, he does have a Raven again. Uh, it would have been used for something like Point Defense Drone. However, uh, Artosis was able to feed back that without any sort of damage coming out of it. So all it is right now is a detector to be able to uh, defend against um, observers. Uh, storms going off on these Thors. However, Storms don't do a terrible amount of damage to the 400 hit point Thors. Uh, it's good to soften them up, but it's not really going to be efficient enough to be able to take the army out. 
uh, and Artosis does lose his entire main army. Hopefully he can reinforce enough here to be able to defend against this in his uh, second expansion. Um, but he also does need...